Hi, my name is Joan Vian. I'm with the Women's International Media Group, and for the last 15 years, I've covered global meetings around the world, 108 to be exact. And it was at my first global meeting in Cairo in 1994, as I was reading the document that supported that particular conference in Cairo, I started noticing interesting language and terminology which I didn't understand. And then as I continued to cover other global meetings, I started to see this phrase about public and private. And sometimes with public and private, they would talk about non-governmental organizations and foundations. They never ever mentioned specifically corporations. And then it wasn't until the meeting that I went to in Istanbul in 1996 that the document was all about something called public-private partnerships. I was pretty amazed. What? What is a public-private partnership? And I didn't quite understand it in Istanbul, but I came home and I decided I would meet with somebody at the World Bank. And so I went down the street, since I live about an hour from the World Bank, outside of Washington, D.C. And I went to the World Bank and I started asking questions about what a public-private partnership was. It was pretty difficult, but I finally figured it out. Very simply, a public-private partnership is a way in which corporations through a new entity called public-private partnership take control of government assets. Very simply, they are taking control of government assets. And when I figured that out, I was absolutely amazed because public-private partnership was a concept plastered throughout the various United Nations conferences and their documents and it was a concept that was also uh, talked about very openly after 1996. It was, if you will, the solution for government that is broke. And unfortunately, the real truth about public-private partnership is that you can call it global corporate fascism, you can call it transfer of wealth. You can say that it uses deceit, deception, and distortion. You can call it the fleecing of the American taxpayer. taxpayer. But public-private partnership is really a new structure for government. In 1999, I went to a conference at the State Department in Washington, D.C., sponsored by Al Gore. And he was holding the first global meeting on reinventing government. And I thought, my goodness, reinventing government? And one of the shocking things at that meeting was Al Gore was talking to other countries, the delegates, from other countries who were at that meeting, and he referred to you and me, the taxpayer, the taxpayer, as customers. And I thought, my goodness, we have now become customers? And it was the terminology that made me realize again that we were talking the restructuring of government. Two years ago, in 2007, I covered the seventh global meeting on reinventing government in Vienna. I wanted to see how far it had come, what kind of evolutionary change that they had come up with. And again, at the center of reinventing government was public-private partnership. So, what is a public-private partnership. Well, let's break down those three words. First, let's start with partnership. Partnership is a business arrangement. It is the most simple form of business. 
two people, or 12 people, or 50 people, or maybe three or four different organizations, whatever the entity is, it doesn't matter, come together and they form a, a business arrangement to do business. So, there are two types of partners, public and private. Public refers to government, all levels of government, local, county, state, federal, foreign, United Nations, all levels of government. That's public. Then you have private. The private partners are corporations, multinational corporations, big, powerful corporations, as well as foundations. At one time when William Jefferson Clinton was president, I laughed about how one day we might have the Slick Willie Foundation and he would form public-private partnerships for his own benefit. And interestingly enough, we now have the William Jefferson Clinton Foundation, and yes, he is part and parcel of many partnerships. So you have foundations, you can have universities, you can have associations, like the Timber Association or the Automobile Association. Any association, any entity that has a lot of money. You can have the Rockefeller Foundation. And then there are non-governmental organizations, the NGOs. Most of the time you would have environmental NGOs, the Sierra Club, the Nature Conservancy, uh, any organization that has to do with the environment because after all, the real bottom line of a public-private partnership is to take control of the assets of government, local government, county government, municipal government, state government, and even federal government.